go join NAFTA. The country wanted to modernize, but just what will come after? Insurgent rebels took the South, the presidential candidate was killed. Investors pulled their money out, and a crisis ensued. I can Quite a thrill. Opportunity.
Then there's the cops. I've had so many run-ins with the cops. I was here as a student. One day I was outside on the phone. You know, I was talking on the phone, walking back and forth, a little nervous. The cop comes up to me. He says, excuse me, son, uh, is everything all right? So I said, yeah, thanks, officer. I kept talking. Then I turn around and I see the car and the lights are going and his buddy's getting out of the car and now this guy comes up and then there are two of the guys up there and they're like, son, you were, you were pulling on the cord. Yeah, you were doing damage to a public phone. Get in the car, son. So I got in the car. Sure, I got in the car. What do you do? So I said, well, what, what are you taking me for? And we're bringing you in as a suspect. A suspect? A suspect of what? A suspect of doing damage to a public phone. So they drive you around, and of course, it's your first experience with the cops. You're like, you know, I'm a law-abiding citizen in my country, and I respect the Mexican laws, and I'm just here as a student, and I wouldn't want to do anything to disturb Mexican law and, and tranquility. That doesn't fly. Then they got you right in their hands. So were they telling me that they're going to take me downtown and they're going to have to take me in for 24 hours of interrogation. And after 24 hours of interrogation, I'm going to have to pay a fine equal to somewhere in the range of 10 minimum salaries. Well, you know, what could I say? I'm sorry, but they want some money. You see, that's how it works. The cops are looking for bribes. See, you bribe a cop, then the money goes up and then he gives his officers some money and it filters its way up right to the top. Everyone's getting their cut. I didn't realize that's how they were playing. And then they're saying, well, you know, we can fix this here, son. I'm like, oh, uh, excuse me? We can fix this here. I'm like, excuse me? We can fix this here. How much money do you have? Well, at that point, they've solicited the bribe pretty clear to me. I mean, I don't have to come out and say it. I wasn't about to initiate a bribe. So. I gave him one I had, which at the time was like 17 bucks, 20 bucks, and they let me go. Yes, then there was the other time as a student, this like Ram Charger thing pulls up, and like five guys get out. And they're on me and they're frisking me and they're like, all right, let's see some, where are you going, son? And then they pull out my wallet. Let's see your, what, what do you got in there? And it's obviously my wallet. So then they want, let's see it. And then they're looking through it to check it out. And then they're like, smelling my fingers. And at that point, see, I, I knew that this was all a game. So I was like, excuse me, officer. I just brushed my teeth so my hands smell like toothpaste. I told him, I said, look, I'm here as a student, I have no money on me, so what can I do? I gave him my credential, my ID, and they said, okay, Mr. Cohen, get going, son. Get going. So I got going. Then there was a time that me and my friend, roommate, Steve Posseff, were walking down the street, and from a distance I saw a cop car, and I told him, if we keep walking, they're going to stop us. And he said, what are you talking about? And I said, yeah, they're going to stop us. So we kept walking, and then sure enough, they pull up next to us, and they say, Go, we have some identification, and they stop the car. The door flies open, and a puff of marijuana smoke comes out at me. And I'm like, whoa! And these two guys came out, and they were yosted. They were out of looking in all directions. They couldn't focus, and they were like, who are you? Can we see some identification? And we gave them our ID, our, our wallets, and they were looking through, we were both carrying lots of cash, probably like 30 bucks each. And they didn't care about the cast. They were just looking at all the hidden compartments looking for more marijuana. I can tell you, I don't want to have a car down here. My roommate Steve has a car. And he just went to the States for Christmas and left me his car. And he said, use it. So I got all excited. I figured, maybe I'll go to Sam's Club and see what's on sale. So I jump in the car. And I forgot that that was the day the car does not circulate. You see there's a program here to fight the smog that one day out of the week your car can't circulate. So I was driving and I didn't realize and this cop comes behind me and the lights start going and then they pull out their speaker and they're like and you know what they're saying but you figure it's, 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 there's a guy behind you the lights are going to mean to you. So you pull over and the guy comes out and he's like 
I know, and they go into these heroic speeches, that you have foreign plates on your car, and probably are not aware of what the local rules are, but Mexico is an autonomous country with its own laws and procedures, and therefore, you should not be circulating on this day. You know, we're going to have to impound your car for 48 hours, and you'll have to pay the equivalent of 10 minimum salaries, which comes out to be 490 pesos, which at the time was about 130 bucks or whatever. And what do I think about that? Well, what do I think about it? It's pretty bad, but what can I do? I've already committed the crime. And he said, well, you know, I could take you home, escort you back to your house, and you could thank me with a little something. And I said, well, sir, I'd love to thank you with something, but I have no cash on me. Do you want some gasoline coupons? The guy's like, gasoline coupons? No, no, no gas coupons. Come on, you can thank me better than that. I said, look, I have no money. If you want, we could go to a bancomer, that's my bank, and I could take out some money to thank you with. And he said, well, let's see, where is there a bancomer on there? I couldn't believe it. The cop is looking for his bribe money. He's trying to think where we can get it from. So he gets in his car. The lights are going, I get in my car, and I'm following him, and he escorts me back to the bank. We get to the bank, and he pulls over the side, turns off his lights, and then I have to go in the bank and make a withdrawal. He never specified the amount of the bribe, so I took out 50 pesos, which at the time was like 17 bucks. It's currently like 10 because it's devaluation. And we go home. I park the car. He comes out, and I slip him the cash, and he says, Well, what's this? This is it? I said, look, it seems reasonable for what this is. And he's like, well, okay, son, but just don't let, ha let it happen again. It was dumb. All my friends said, if that ever happens again, just say, okay, let's go downtown and interrogate me.